Back, come back, I'm Gertie Brew, back again in the Thursday mood. Thursday, day before Friday, I love Friday because Friday's the day before the weekend. And this weekend is the weekend leading up to the great day when Jesus himself was born. The little baby Jesus, and you know what I'm like about babies. It's all very wunderbar, voodoo verse. Oh, I'm so excited. Don't really how many Christmases I've been on this planet. I still, They're all still like the first one for me. They really are. You know, lots of stables and mangers and all things like that. Well, it is after I've hit the sherry. Anyway, so where are we today? Andrew's a nightmare. Yes, capiche? Definitely. Agreed. What's he done now? Oh, yeah. It's all about that, isn't it? Apparently, they're going to release the names after Christmas. Um, it's 170 odd names and they reckon about 160 are going to be released. It's not the ones that they release that I'm interested in. It's the ones that they don't release, my dears. But, um, and also I'm hearing, um, some rumblings about the muchness of Marklet is all, oh, she's all disconcerted. She's got a fog in a scrunch. She has food too. She's worried she might have a name on the list. Now, this is literally a no brain. This is rubbish. This is just a diversion. Listen, I know she's supposed to be 42, but, you know, most people are 42 can get away with 35. And there's no way that thing's 35, don't matter how much bleed plastic surgery. She looks every day at 48, but even she weren't really at 48 old enough to have been in any way a perpetrator on that island. Um, yeah, no, the perpetrators were all, you know, a lot older and there's a big power imbalance. None of the girls were under age. From what I could gather, they're all of age. Um, and I'm the biggest one to start chucking mud at people that um, abuse children in any form. But I think a lot of these young ladies were more than willing, you know, my dears. Agreed, there might have, as I say, there might have been a power imbalance and money involved. Uh, but that's sort of morals rather than legals, isn't it, really? And to say that all of these young women, which is what they were, they were young women... We're all just bimbos that are being led astray is bullshit. You know, it really is rubbish. Um, but that's not to say that there wasn't some insidious things going on. <laughs> and there's some pretty tenacious journalists that have uh, exposed this whole shebang. To me, I must say, I think it was a social construct of some, of some form to set up certain people within society, Andrew being one of them. But the sad thing about this whole book thing is I happen to have known, yes, going back a few years, I did, in fact, know the names on the book, you know, my dears. Yes, most people did that were following it sort of tenaciously. Yes, yeah, like a dog after a rabbit I was, my dears. And some of the names that are on there, are well, they not Prince Andrew? Do you get me capiche? Yes, they could be what one might call very embarrassing, my dears, very embarrassing uh, for certain people in the highest echelons of society and the elite throughout the global world and the global known world, or whatever it is, universe, whatever. Yes, oh dearie me, never mind. Um, but the mop will flop whatever way the mop decides to flop, my dears. And I really do think that Andrew in particular has peed off a lot of people. Um, yeah, he's an arrogant P, he is. An, an arrogant man, um, just a spoiled brat, entitled. He's like Harry and Meghan rolled up together. He's just an a-hole of the highest order. But... Ah, oh, to say he is all the things that he is, is really <laughs> pushing the broom. It really is. I just, I can't see it. I think they're they're wrapping him up to be this big abuser. But really, when you look at the facts, mm, they're not, they don't, well, they wouldn't hold up in court of law. Let's put it that way. Uh, well, definitely not one in England. No matter how vile he is, he can be vile and, and uncouth and bombastic and arrogant and a bully and all of those things. But doesn't make him an abuser. And equally, you can get somebody who's really lovely and amazing, and wonderful and wunderbar, and somebody, oh, let's think like Tyler Perry. And he's all those things, but seems to have a little bit of dirt on him in the abuse stakes. So I think there's something going on. He's annoyed a lot of people, Andrew. He's crossed somebody. I think it's probably to do with, like I said before, it's an Eton internecine warfare between Andrew's camp and the um, now King's camp. Even though they smile and, and nice to each other in public, that's the way they roll. But I think there's shite. Yes, on doorsteps. Yes. And I think Charles has had to bend over backwards to accommodate him, to keep him stum. Do we all remember how he was saying he was going to write his memoirs? 
And everyone was hoping that he uh, got dementia and couldn't remember shite. Yeah, it's one of them. Anyway, I'm going to move on because I think I've sworn and been uncouth enough for one upload. So let's go listen to a whole load of old cack, you know. The real stuff that's going on in the world isn't this. Right. I mean, you know, Prince Andrew is not exactly everyone's favourite royal. He is the black sheep of the family, to put it lightly. Uh, Sorry, I thought Meghan was the black sheep of the family, his, but there you uh, go. Titles and positions in recent years. And now with these fresh allegations, he is just a... Well, they're not fresh. They really don't need. No, they're not fresh. They're not fresh allegations, my dear. They've been around for time. I was reading this in the mail in March 2010. Uh, where have you lot been? This was all going on. It was all in the gossip columns. Yeah, you know what I'm like, for two verse. Yes, it was it Ephraim in the mail of oh, whatever paper. I think it was the mail. Well, it was the mail because that's the only paper I used to read when I did what one called reading papers. Um, of course, nobody reads papers nowadays, do they, my dears? No, they don't. But uh, yeah, it was all in the gossip columns back then. Uh, he was made, because uh, he was Mummy's little favourite, we all know he's Lord Porchester's and all that, bleed who he, you've only got to look at him, Lord Porchester is a baby, and Andrew is a baby, and Capiche, they're like bleeding twins. I could say a lot more, but I don't want to end up like David Frost. So, apart from that, uh, he was always Mummy's favourite, and he uh, knew it, the world knew it, and he threw his considerably vast weight around. And what he did do, the dirt they had on him is tenuous, Especially in this country, it's tenuous. Immoral, and it puts him in a really bad light. But I think he's been up to a lot worse stuff that would possibly put him in a far worse light. Some of the dodgy dealings he did when mummy made him a bleeding, what was he? What was he? Something to do with an ambassador for this country? A trade ambassador. I mean, you know, talk about having your fingers in the deal. Oh, yes, my mummy's the queen and she's going to make me the trade ambassador, yes? And at that, I've got myself, where hell, I've made myself quite a few bling squillions. I have food too. I have. God help myself. I'm mummy's favourite. What was he? The golden boy, wasn't he? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, I think it's more to do with Andrew's camp and Charles's camp. And they've butted what one might call heads. Come on. Yeah, but he's far more of a headache than Meghan and Harry. That is a Well, that's debatable, sort of but go on. Down ...between the Sussexes and the, and the royal family. This is a far more serious pro <coughs> problem, excuse me, for Sorry. the royal family to deal with, because these oh, are very serious You allegations. can't even seriously say that. It's not that serious. I know you're trying to make it serious, but it isn't serious. You know, it really isn't. I know people are going to go, oh, well, he's done this, he's done that. Because the word SCX is involved, if you look into his background, he's done far worse stuff than Grope Sunbird's boob. Let's put it that way. Who was of age. I'd be the first one chucking Brit back at him, metaphorically and literally, if I thought at any point he had abused a minor child. But he hasn't abused a minor child. What he's done is immoral, it's unroyal, it's a lot of things. But I think it's also something we can all hang our hats on and remember it's pantomime season, go boo, hiss, boo, you know? Oh, it's Andrew. Yeah, well, we all know Randy Andy. He's creepy, cool. He's got wandering hands and everything. And it covers up the actual things he's been up to, which are far more serious than groping some bird's boob. Yes. Obviously, likewise, paid $12 million likewise, to... wise Charles, actually. I know that's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but uh, yeah, you wait until... Well, all will be revealed that has been hidden or something or other that was in the New Testament. Virginia Jeffrey. Uh, to try and I mean, with an out of court settlement, uh, but now with further revelations, it just adds yeah. to uh, the situation of how do they deal with the problem that is Prince Andrew? And how really do you deal with the problem, problem like Prince because Andrew? These allegations keep surfacing, and obviously, when we get revelations about some the of guy the guy is an absolute a hole of the highest order. I mean, he's just a cretin, and if a child reflects their parents. Yes, that's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Yes, can't say any more than that, can we? We're not allowed to. For the other names that might be uh, linked to this uh, in a couple of weeks' time, it will always compound the problem. So the royal family, in terms of dealing with the Harry and Meghan one, well, that's relatively straightforward. That's just a, a family... Um, How do you deal with the problem? Um, like uh, 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 or in a sort of, in a way. But this is different. And how does... The royal family manage those optics through Christmas and going. See how we're being feasted with Andrew, 
uh, the, the narrative is about Andrew, but they're giving us pictures of the marklets. Um, there's a plot to play. There's a plot to play. And I hope to pick it apart for us, bit by bit, piece by piece, as it is unravelling, which it will do between now and I think the beginning of the new year. Yeah. Come on, let's go, dear. Because we only tend to see Rattle your gums, love. Uh, the, sort of pr uh, the private public functions, i.e. appearing at Christmas Day for the walk to church and those kind of occasions. Yeah. Um, and we, of course, have seen him at uh, the coronation. and we've seen See, the sad thing is the Queen lived far too long. Nobody in history has held up that such high office for such a long time. Was it the King of Bhutan or somewhere or other, whatever he is? Somewhere like that. No one cares about Nepal. I said knee pull, not nipple. Um, yeah, don't say nipple in front of Andrew. Get him all excited, my dears. Um, somewhere like that. But anyway, and it was never meant to be like that. And I think, I think, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think Charles has had his fingers in quite a few tills across his 74 years. Yes, he has. He had to wait a hell of a long time to do what he was born to do. Let's have it right. It was one purpose for being born, and that was what he's doing. It's sad, really. It is. Because anyone else, you know, your parents get married. Well, not mine, but most people's parents get married, have a baby, because they want a baby. But I'm not saying that Queen Elizabeth and Philip didn't want a baby, but that baby was preordained to be who he was. And it's a very long time to wait, isn't it, on the sidelines. And I think he's got himself into hot water that's been covered up and covered up and plastered over and painted over and redirected everybody. Look over here. Look at Harry. Look at the Meg, the Marklet. Look at Prince Andrew. Look at all those people over there. Don't look at what he's been doing. I'm sorry to say it, but that's the vibe I get. And that's the vibe I've had for a very long time now, my dears. Yes, yes. And I know it's Christmas, I shouldn't speak out of turn, because we all love our Prince Charlie. We do, don't we? Happy old body Prince Charlie. Yeah, we do, we do. We prefer him to the Mark the Clips, funeral. anyway. Now, occasionally we see him driving his Range Rover around and riding a horse in Windsor Great Park. Mm. But aside from that, we don't see him. And well, no one wants to see him, because the, the guy's an a-hole, great. They've got a real issue here. As to how... <sighs> He's the highest grade of a-hole known to man he is. He's a real walking, talking, bling, spot, rat. That, well, he's getting all his retirement age now, isn't he, old Andy? But I think, you know, the brothers, they've got muck on each other. And I think, because the conduit between the Marklets and the royal family does tend to be the um, New York girls. Have you noticed that, Vutu viewers? So, and if you go in your history as well, you always see the courts, the two, because people have friendship groups. And as you're royal, then you have courts. And you've got all this, as I've said before, internecine warfare that's very subtly and in the way that they do it, well, they do it quite regally, but it's not his warfare. Um, and this is all another revelation to put him back in his box, because I think since Charles has become king, he has made, let's say, concerted efforts to get back in, probably using every card he can play to get his own way with his brother. And I think the people around Charles have now regrouped, regathered and thrown this at at the York, at the Duke of York to shut him up and put him back in his box. That's what I think. And also maybe to redirect away from some uncomfortable revelations that may or may not occur in the new year. And with that, I'm going to get on with cooking my tea. Bye bye now, YouTube. Love you and leave you.